Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here with me today. I am making a cold press of soap that is a restock for me. I usually make this at least once or twice a year, if not more, and it is sea salt and orchid. Now guys, this fragrance oil I get from Candle Science, it is my best selling fragrance of pretty much anything I make with it. Creams, liquid soaps, body butters, sugar scrubs, you name it, this is a best seller. So if you're a maker and you're looking for the best fragrance oil, this is it guys, it is so, so good. I am making a big double batch. I am getting ready for my Cover Bridge Festival and if you are interested in knowing a little bit more about this very large 10 day festival that I am going to, I'll link some videos up above and maybe at the end of the video and that way you can check those out if you're interested in knowing all about that. So I am getting ready for that and I'm starting to think about that. So I am making a double batch of this. I haven't made a double batch of soap since 2017, 2018, I can't remember, one of those two years. So when I started planning on making this soap and thinking I needed to do a double batch, I started researching and I went back on the website and I noticed that the clean scent version of this fragrance oil was a little bit different in that it has excessive acceleration. Uh, that's a little concerning <laughs> to me. I planned all of this that's in front of me for excessive acceleration. And then I came down here and realized that I have the old discontinued version and it doesn't have excessive <laughs> acceleration. But I'm gonna keep with my plan just because I've already done everything for this soap and I'm just gonna keep with the layers and keep with what I was gonna do um, so that I can just move forward. Both of these fragrance oils will discolor to dark tan and the new one, does accelerate. Now when I made this one, even though it says none on the discontinued version, it did accelerate on me. I was still able to get a pretty swirl, but it was still, it still accelerated. So fair warning. I did purchase a one ounce bottle of the clean version and maybe that's why I was thinking I, I had the clean version on, on my shelf. I wanted to see the difference. Out of the bottle, I see no difference. I can tell no difference between these two bottles. Um, I think they smell exactly the same. So I'm hoping that in the soap, the end product will be the same as well. So let's bring the camera down. I've, I'm actually ready for you guys. I'm actually like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my hair thing on and my gloves on and we're gonna make this soap like right now. All right, so what I did was I split my recipe. So I. I took my standard 27 bar batch recipe and I doubled it. So this is 105 ounces of oil for me. So I just resized my recipe in Soap Maker 3 to 210 ounces of oil weight. I resized that to 33.3% and it gave me all of my uh, measurements I needed to split this batch off into three ways. I'm going to do three different colors. So the first color I'm going to use is Caribbean Blue from Brambleberry. And this is a mica. My label says mica, but it doesn't look like a mica. And it doesn't really, it doesn't, it's really large clumpy. So I think I am just gonna put this in my oils and I'm gonna blitz it like crazy. I already have goat milk in here. I already have my kale and clay in here. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here and just go to town on it, guys. Now this fragrance oil discolors to a dark tan. So when I was choosing my colors I was really trying to find the ones that were deeply pigmented. I wouldn't want anything like, I wouldn't want a blue that is not like really deeply blue uh, because of the discoloration that's gonna happen. Look at me have my stick blender put away. I 
I'm still seeing speckles. I was worried about that. I should have taken the time to get this really good and mixed in with some base oil weight, base oils. So I'm just gonna keep blending. I think that's gonna be as good as I'm gonna be able to get it. So I'm gonna throw in my lye water. I wish it didn't discolor. That's such a bummer when you're really wanting pretty colors. And this has always been pretty, actually. I've never been super disappointed in the colors I've gotten. I'm also using a slow moving recipe this time as opposed to last year when I made it and it accelerated on me. And even back then, I felt like a lot of my acceleration issues was my formula driven more than the fragrance oil driven. And I can see that this is probably the case because this is not accelerating at all. <laughs> and last year it did. Look at that. I'm not even at a trace, really. I mean, a, maybe just a tiny bit of a trace. I'm tempted to stick blend it. <laughs> I'm so impatient. <laughs> There, I think that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and get her in there. Oh! For this next color, I'm going to be using Fantasia from Nurture Soap. I've never used blue. I can't open my bottle. Um, I've always made purple and yellow whenever I've made sea salt and orchid. It just fits, doesn't it? But I wanted that third color and I started with green <laughs> and I changed my mind to blue. I need to let it set up a little bit so I can texture it. Look at that. I don't know where that came from either. All right, I'm gonna shut you off. I'm gonna let this sit for a minute and then we'll come back and do the next layer. Weigh both of these I want to see how close I am just by eyeballing all of that I could have picked a bigger spoon for this too this is kind of silly okay last layer guys I'm gonna use up this yellow vibrance mica so the yellow vibrance mica is a more of a golden yellow. I kind of had forgotten about that. So I am going to put a little bit of yellow neon in this. And I am going to disperse that in a little oil first though. Another thing that I think might be happening is there is soap in here from me just reusing this pitcher over and over and I think that's turning my yellow a little bit of orange. 
that's also probably what's going on. Okay, <laughs> I had to clean up for a second. Uh, all right, let me let me get this in before I forget this. I can't leave well enough alone. I'm gonna go on the back counter, weigh them, and make sure they weigh equal ma amounts. <laughs> I kind of forgot I had these Himalayan pink sea salts and I'm just going to kind of sprinkle them maybe like random just a line I'm gonna to try to stay where my bars are and maybe just down the center I don't have this really marked very well on this one not at all so I'm imagining a lot of these will fall off. All right, I'm actually gonna take some pictures before I put these in the oven and then we will bring them out tomorrow and cut them. Okay guys, let's look at this. I think it's gonna look pretty neat. I do have some air pockets in there, but that's probably just the way I was trying to get those scoopies going. Oh, and there goes the salts. There you go. I think it's going to discolor a little bit more. You can kind of see on the edge, maybe, that it's it definitely has a little bit of more discoloration to do. This vibrancy is going to be toned down for sure. And it's going to look more, more muted. They're all gonna be pretty much the same. I got another little air pocket. They're cut, they're cleaned, they're ready to go for pictures. And they smell so good, it smells so good. Design, all right, here's the thing guys. I really don't like layers. <laughs> I don't like layers. I think they're fine. Sometimes I like the layer and then doing an in the pot swirl type of swirl on top of a base layer. That's beautiful. I just don't see layers being pretty. I think this soap kind of begs for a pretty design. And layers, they're not pretty. <laughs> this is just me talking. Don't, don't be hating on me. I just don't like them. <laughs> So the next time I make the soap, I think I'm just going to do one color. I think I would like that design better than this. That's just me though. I'm just not a fan. <laughs> just not a fan. Um, but all in all, and so the fragrance oil, the problem is the fragrance oil will discolor and I, I brought out the, the end piece. Now this it just will give it a dinginess, right? It just has this, and you can kind of see right there maybe, it's gonna, that discoloration along that line. It's just gonna be a very muted, almost dingy looking color. And all of the soaps that I've ever made with sea salt and orchid do have this kind of muted, dingy look to them. And people don't care because like I said, this is my best selling soap. People don't care about that. But I think that would be less noticeable as a one color soap, as opposed to trying to put three colors or swirls that I've done in the past. And I'll try to pop up some pictures here so you can see the designs I did in the past with this soap, some more successful than others. But I think one color will be my go-to for this fragrance from this moment forward. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm glad I have it back in stock. I made two 27 bar batches, so that's gonna be great. That really should get me actually through fall, maybe into Christmas, maybe not. <laughs> I don't have a lot of shows this summer. I don't really do summer shows very often, so I don't have a lot of uh, 
big sales coming. So really most of my work in the summer is preparing for fall. And that's what this is, preparing for fall. I'm already on it, June 1. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for your time. I appreciate that. I appreciate you watching, commenting, liking, subscribing, all that good stuff. I hope to see you in the next one, guys. Bye.